get over the water's skin like moonlight or like something unnameable that passed between us swiftly before we could control ourselves and was gone. Two, our waking bodies unbecome us, wraith-like, too frail for the permanence around them. This chair, this pale morning light resolving as the eyes adjust. These lives mistaken for dream, these dreams that seem a life's negation, punctuating our existence. So images from life appear as dreams through a window, teenage lovers on the pier, a freighter yawing imperceptibly in the bay, the paths that we might walk, these tracings through the condensation that cloud our emergence into the real, part chrysalis, part paralysis, beautifully cold, like cruelty made pure. Three, the shape of the world is a ship pulling from harbor, huge, disquieting, carving its hulk through the fluid's passageway, tiny light of the barrios beyond the airport, man-made islands, the new volcanism that forges neighborhood from industrial scrap. So a heaviness pulls at the pier's knuckles as the ship steers into the open bay. It's like that, how our distance particulates each evening into traces we might leave behind. The you and I infused in this place. Times when we've walked down this dock pursued by vacancy, or when vacancy walked in our step while the world closed seamless around us. This is us revealed, some smallness without center, oralless and bare, two non-things drifting in the tide's detritus. Four, voluminous, suddenly violent, the water surged against the retainer wall last night, shifting from some huge weight displaced offshore or just out of sight in the depths of the channel. I think of you, these wild nights, landscape quaking with uncertainty. Where have you gone from us, I wanna ask, always and always as something in the water strains and goes white, strains and goes dark as though an answer. Five. Wind stirs over the channel like something animal, fictive, a thing imagined, like something that belongs to the night or to a sense of time collapsed between us, the way we'd converge two creatures in pain for each other, down to the single fold that divides us, flesh from flesh, from where we'd intersect furiously under the foamy light of the warehouses, the blazing turbulence spreading our impression across the wharves and water. So night continues down its avenues of bone. The demon in me greets the demon in you. Six. But what do we owe them, our failures? Distorted mirrors reflecting their emptiness inward. Ruinous nights when we lived in disappointment as in love. Neither sin nor sacrament, no offering that no one takes upon the tongue. So the bay goes still. So the waters pulse out somewhere beyond awareness to where our bodies calcify, dream addled, regretful, drifting toward a sun that never comes. Seven. Without you, I imagine you, standing at the entrance to the channel, sleet-streaked nights I surrender myself. 
Then I'm flying west along the rib work of the earth, its curve a corporeality. And you somewhere out there, a body within the body, the wind's exhalation smoothing you over. What have I left but that which leaves, which is to say, that which sleeps, that which stares each of us down as elsewhere in the distance, even as we flee it, the world's deepness may sunder us. Eight. As before, we'd come to the place where the within filled up and its confusion spilled out like a haze into the bay. Something passing overhead, the moon icing everything. So we looked north toward the city with its difficulties that we failed to take upon ourselves. As elsewhere and all around us, simply, devastatingly, the words came for us. Nine. Sleep again eluded me. So I walked down to the channel where I've seen the waters go wild some nights, threatening to come ashore, knuckling at the break wall with the dumb urgency of the inanimate. But the tide was out and everything seemed empty. And there was a lightness in the east that wasn't quite potential. Soon the mysteries of nightfall would again be replaced by simple objecthood. The day's dreamlessness we can't escape. What use is hope if it comes to this? Heavens peeled back to reveal our dreck and detritus beneath. A smell of tar and seaweed was coming off of the mud flats amid the jumble of rock and fallen pilings. And I was thinking of a love I'd lost. Then the sun cresting over all of us, the power plants, the abandoned warehouse, and the channel's gaping question mark beyond. Okay, I think I have enough time to read a sort of coda to that poem. It's set in the same location, but it's not the same poem. It's called At Pleasure Bay. I need a drink of water. That was the first time I'd read that poem aloud in public, so huzzah. <laughs> okay, this is called At Pleasure Bay. At Pleasure Bay, where gulls feed off the carrion crab and reek of the thrusting foam-striped sea. Sci-fi orbs of the treatment plant winking off against the shit streaked concrete blocks and degenerate dark of the bulwark where fat-bellied planes scrape the horizon and container cranes loom, where night advances down its long path into the breach dividing end from eternity. Is it simplistic to say the water was black? It was black in deepening blue, orange in places, salty, rotten, and sweet. It was light, it was shade, and surface and mystery beneath. Is it simplistic to be gripped by memory, by its gravity, where the light crusts overhead and the wind is everywhere at once, frothing the harbor with dappled influence? You were the one who had come here to be pulled from your body, to feel the pulse of the harbor and be swept by it. You were the one walking to escape the tremors of remembrance, wandering out there at the boundary, taking in its seductive nothingness, as you always had been. The carapace cracks, some version of you, always straining to molt the damage of the shell, will slip under the waves and be gone. Thank you.
Thank you very much for honoring us by being your first ones to hear that the channel that allowed and I have to say that it, it's, it reminds me of watching the debate a little bit last night when they said uh, that Kamala Harris broke the Ford, fourth wall because I feel like you were, I'm sure all of us each feel you were reading it only to us. <laughs> so wonderful intimacy. Okay. Um, I, I realized I did not start the recording on time when I said I was going to start the recording. I always forget that there's a second step. So I may have to uh, go back and do a reintroduction at the end. Um, but, uh, and also in case we missed the very beginning of your reading. So Rob, you and I'll make sure that everything stays intact and my apologies. Our next Jack Straw reader tonight is Chingyi Chen. Chingyi Chen is a genderqueer Chinese American hybrid writer community organizer and teacher. They are author of The Heart's Traffic and Recombinant, winner of the 2018 Lambda Literary Award for Transgender Poetry, as well as the chapbooks How to Make Black Papers Sing and Kundaman for Kin, Information Retrieval for Monsters. No wonder you like that monster idea. Um, Chen is also co-editor of The Revolution Starts at Home, Confronting Intimate Violence Within Activist Communities. And here is a pen, an anthology of West Coast Kundaman poets. They have received fellowships from Kundaman, Lambda, Watering Hole, Kansarat, and Imagining Mer America, and are part of Makondo and Voices of Our Nation's Arts Foundation writing communities. They are currently assistant professor at the University of Washington Bothell. Welcome, Chingy. Thank you, Peggy, um, to my Jack Straw cohort and all of you for being here and maybe all the future viewers. Hopefully we will have some future viewers. Um, so um, I learned a few hours before our reading of the passing of a friend um, who I knew in Houston. Um, I moved here from Houston last year and um, this friend's name is Monica Roberts, um, who she's um, a creator of the award-winning blog Trans Griot, which has been covering the trans community since 2006. Um, she was a brilliant community leader and gatherer. Um, so I'm gonna dedicate my reading tonight to Monica Roberts um, in her memory. Um, if you don't know who she is, I hope you go look her up because um, she has done so many amazing things um, and she has really impacted and, um, and changed the world for, for trans folks. Um, and since I met her when I was living in Houston, I'm going to read poems from my time in Houston in her honor. Spell for safety. For the trans and gender nonconforming students walking the stage at Lavender graduation. Maybe it was you learning to walk home crosswise, your own safety valve, you who trained a tongue, chosen name, listening for reflection to speak back. You, I'm calling you, grew yourself at argument's end, slept borrowed and burned, who filled in space of the wisecrack, who emptied the sidewalk, who cleared the toxic table. You breathed down your own street, rose tall, stitched, built your own table, lit candles for the living who couldn't make it back. The invitations, the city, the hauntings and the hatchets, the you, the you, the you walking home safe, opening the door, setting the table for company. I'm gonna share two pieces from that time, or sorry, three pieces, um, two more pieces. Um, so this is um, a lyric essay called Elgin, and this is dedicated to the, the street that I lived on for a time. Elgin. I write this at a desk a 10 minute drive away from the house we vacated in 48 hours when our landlord in Norway, question mark, in Pakistan, question mark, in Netherlands, question mark, lost her house in foreclosure. 
Yesterday, we drove back, curious to check on the house after Hurricane Harvey receded, and saw the closed fence, the overfull trash, the height of that grass. We wanted to see if the house was still standing, still holding space, still breathing ghosts. The night before we arrived to transplant into our rented house, a ladder walks off missing, two snug air conditioners. The heat decides for us that we will eat cold today. We walk through the back door, past the bare walls, say hello to a discarded bike with flat tires, to the open door of a molding freezer. Small curios live in the house, a trail of cloth elephants, a dream of fabric, the stretch of a wood table. Remnants from other bodies, some wildlife still scurrying under the countertops, still eating against the grain. Our almost neighbor, an older African-American man who parks in the grass-filled lot next to our old house almost daily, was not there. His truck, often running, sometimes playing old soul, was not nestled up on the grass. His black plastic table was not set up. His friends were not keeping him company. He was not napping with one eye on the street. Diagonal across the street from the front door we don't use, an enormous orange complex, the new recreation center, finished. A renovated Emancipation Park, originally purchased by the Colored People's Festival and Emancipation Park Association for Juneteenth celebrations. While we've watched it go up, handwritten letters are put in the mail slot for our absentee landlord. Do you want to sell your house? Question mark. Do you want to sell your house? Question mark. Sell your house? Question mark. A few times, we come home to handwritten notes tucked into the door handle, through the gate, asking the same question. One day, we come home to a notice full of typos declaring new ownership of the house tacked to the back door, the front door, and the window. We call an old friend. Is this a scam? Question mark. Must be a scam. Two weeks ago, this desk was the perfect vantage point for watching the water in my new street fill up and drain and then fill up again. I watched the water outside surrounded by boxes on the floor. No more dog walkers. On the news, what to do about attics and axes. We worry about our belongings all strung out on the floor. As the no hype weatherman gets more hyped up, we hoist boxes up. Each hour as the rain falls, we hoist and unpack boxes, uncover evidence of living and listen to the water. My brother WhatsApp me from Hong Kong. Are you okay? Question mark. Are you okay? Question mark. They have just survived a typhoon. We are lucky, I say. We are still lucky. Those living underneath the old house, a mouthful of lizard, a cap of cockroach, a cut of mouse, an orchestra of cat. Gossip was a rotation of carnivore and plant crusher, an empty pot by the door. Many plants die upon contact. I can't keep them from wilting. One day a neighbor comes by. Hey, does Kay still own this house? Question mark, he asks, looking at us. Later, I ask see if we look like a queer couple or some lesbians, friends or family, question mark. Do we look like we belong together, a gender ambiguous Asian American and a white trans woman sharing an old house, question mark. Yes, we say. He points to a slouching tree ominously encroaching on our car. Looks like it's gonna fall. We thank him and he goes down the street again. The first day that we moved into the neighborhood, our almost neighbor had driven slowly by high in his black truck, told us that he had a relationship with the land next door and that he visited from time to time. I felt protected under his gaze, almost comforted under his surveillance. The old house was a bit lonely, a bit creaky. When you were alone, you felt a spook. Across the street, another old house with a no trespassing private property sign, though we never saw anybody go in or out. On the last night, the only things left in the house were the clippings from my buzzed head and shrimp peels from our ransacked fridge. A stained mattress and upended sofa slowly grew into a stack in the street across from our back door next to an orange hanging electrical wire. A short bearded man dragged more furniture out to the pile. We looked at each other, accomplices in trash, neighbors in the night. Um, thank you so much for being such a great um, listening ear for my work. 
um, and to honor Monica Roberts, I'm just going to finish with one um, last piece called Breath for Guanyin. One, brought to pond, 10,000 steps a hum, each cascade of yellow tile supported by sturdy red. One metal figure waiting on water to quiet mind's battle. Metallic rain hoard means fill your bathtub, cook all food, no water in grocery store, gas station line to empty. Crush of leftover white cardboard boxes, floor length, we unpack, lift box higher. No bathing, no showering, do we have an ax? Question mark, a tight set of drawers and lungs. Slow a breath for ritual smoke. Open late door and friend a shoe on busy rack. Empty, enter, already breathing room. One hundred golden figures sitting in perch, each sewn seat in neat place. Considering attic, a man walks in front of watching window, no shoes we could second. Each foot slowly, again, again. Floor it. A message says to knock on Airbnb door. Two, man or woman, question mark. Man or woman, question mark. No other options at check-in. Ladies or jocks, question mark. No times for questions. 11 size sneakers, pair of gray shorts, women's blouse, children's shoes. What size, question mark. Line of eagers at distribution line all day. Rice University students writing orders. Fill big blue bags. Sort through assembly walkers, toothbrushes, pillows, blankets, a hot commodity special line form to write. Don't you, Mr. Me. I see who wanted ladies' shoes, repeating request. I'm not a mister. I'm not a mister. And no response before turning away from line toward a line of beds. Volunteer supervisor, no time for questions. I write on post-it note, please no assumptions. Please respect. Please no time for questions. Three. Friend said, all the aunties chanting brought me green. One sound, four meanings. I enter inflection meaning mother not horse, meaning guide, sits, sings. Lesson from diverging mouth. Chemical cloud ping-pings, a hot rushing air. All bodies in yard, humming in mind. Thick infection in head. Can't say I broke much trying not to ingest 10,000 hurricane microbes, let go spider tendrils. Four, at the lost and found, eyeglasses, a credit card, note left at desk because no cell phone. Woman in wheelchair checks in again about no cell phone. Cold boxed pizza. White haired, unshavens, waded through waters, wants help calling FEMA. From Louisiana to Katrina, lost bags, maybe at last shelter, lost daughter or son back in LA. We roll through shelter names and phone number. I inhale smoke, dial disembodied numbers to receive. Heart knows how to attach, how to cling where the ache, sister in empty seat, how to bring down rain. Why chant dead grandmothers into room, animal set loose in chest, only one a believer, in other a cook preparing food for hungry repentance. Five, when street drains, is there pressure in street? All notes escaping injure to try not, Exhume breath from body, walk away from dead night, throw arms to air, hoping for birds to land. Thank you. Thank you. What a beautiful tribute to your friend, Monica. Tell us her name again so we can read more about her. Monica Roberts. Monica Roberts. Thank you so much. Our next reader is Maisha Banks Manson. Maisha is a queer, gender, non-conforming, black identified artist, activist, teacher, and writer. They have devoted their personal journey to self healing through reclamation of personal history, knowledge, and creating spaces for healing of others. Please welcome Maisha. Hi friends. Uh, so, so to be here on a Thursday evening as it gets closer and closer to 
you know, really being fall and I have to give up on my sunshine. Um, so now we're gonna go through a, a few things that the, the season. Um, we talked about monsters in the beginning and I thought it would be fitting to keep it as a theme. Um, and then we'll end with a tarot reading. Of this black boy knew, shine, like you know how. Damned to bear me broken, tear you out of my lungs, this black girl. Black girl is not used to being happy, so I wrap her affirmation and lullaby her gorgeous. Black girl is not used to being safe, so I shine her with lavender, pour warmth between her shoulders. Black girl is not used to being heard, so I map pleasure on my hand and teach her braille. Black girl is not used to being loud, so I break her heavy and she paints the walls with her screams. Black girl is not used to being alone, so I leave and leave and leave. Black girl screams on her own, safe on her own, heard on her own, and finally loves. Leads for the first time for herself, and I will, will wait for the moon. She bleeds for the first time for herself. Black girl screams on her own, safe on her own, heard on her own, and finally loves. So I leave and leave and leave. Black girl is not used to being alone. So I break her heavy and she paints the walls with her screams. Black girl is not used to being loud. So I'm at pleasure on my hands and teach her braille. Black girl is not used to being heard. So I shine her with lavender, pour warmth between her shoulders. Black girl is not used to being safe. So I wrap her affirmation, lullaby her gorgeous. Black girl is not used to being happy. This black girl tear you out of my lungs, damn to bear me broken shine of this black boy. New. There are snaps coming from my house. Um, I swallow creatures whole. Tail over tongue, claws gnarled in my throat, scales and grin like lost lovers in my cheeks. My stutter be blood stains. The way my mom taught me. The same way her mom taught me. To hold, uh, to hold breasts back behind trapped teeth, silent choir, our song, black, Cuban, whisper our dreams, shout out skin fire, dance till we bleed the same way, this way. To hold our beast trapped behind teeth like silent choir song, swallowed. So we had some fun with some monsters, um, and we're gonna listen to a few um, poems about uh, tarot cards and a tarot reading that I, I give to y'all. Um, the tarot reading uses three cards, one oracle card, two tarot cards, um, and then uh, sort of wraps up those meanings to, to take with y'all. So the card boundaries. Celiac uh, Bablonica, AKA Willow. Bow, steadfast. Eat the sun, broken, heavy hands, tired arms. The most beautiful burdens are carried in tired, heavy bows. Bow, steadfast. Eat the sun, broken, heavy hands, tired arms. Carried and tired, heavy bows, the most beautiful burden. For the lovers. I painted my lover's skin, covered scars with water, dye poured each, poured into each myopic crevice. Let me cover her whole till she resembled my favorite colors crawled into the back of my throat, kicked out I love yous in Morse code on my voice box. This is how I know she never loved me. Paint is never supposed to dry quick, evaporate on tongue. I stopped painting, picked up sculpting marble. Each chip you make, more damage than the last. You polish if needed. 
sometimes. The page of wands in reverse. There was a meteor chest, did you know? It's still on fire, still living plumes of smoke and space in your wake. There's an asteroid sitting between your ribs, do you know? Wrapped inferno around your waist. Do you know there is a star in your height so bright it can't be helped but noticed? The message from your cards. How crystals are formed. Wrapped in Frena, poured into each myopic crevice the most beautiful burden. Gaze so holy they never uh, leave this love. Salt take hold of their strength, root in back. Drawn in isolation, formed in kin, tangle in comfort. Tears find each other. Tangle in comfort, drawn in isolation, formed in kin. Salt takes hold of their strength, roots in backbone, gaze. So holy they never leave this love, wrapped in inferno, poured into each myopic crevice, the most beautiful burden. Thank you so much. Um, I hope you uh, take all of this well. Well, it said in the comments, you know, from Rob that, you know, he thought Maisha was trying to murder us all, but other than that, <laughs> thank you. That's coming for you, Rob. Yeah. You guys are all like leaving us wanting more tonight. I should have told you you had longer. My goodness. <laughs> um, I forgot to mention earlier in the event that we generally have open mic in between. Um, but since we had four readers tonight, I didn't know how it would go, but we'll definitely have time if anybody would like to do a three minute open mic after our final reader. Um, now, Jose Treomaya has, um, his camera isn't working tonight, but we should be able to have, you know, we'll be able to listen with even more senses. And I've also asked him to do more of an introduction of himself because despite coaching, um, with my daughter in Mexico today, I would absolutely butcher his amazing bio. We'll say that um, before I turn it over to him, that he is from, um, excuse me, Jose Treomaya has published in the UK, US, India, Spain, Australia, Argentina, Germany, and Venezuela. He was a New Rivers Press Many Voices Project 2018 finalist, and I will let him uh, share with you the tradition from which he draws his work tonight. So welcome, Jose. Hi, everyone. You guys can hear me? Yes. Good. Yeah, I just noticed, I guess my camera, something happened to it because I had a meeting yesterday and everything was working. And right now when I logged in, it didn't, it says it's not turning on. And um, I guess I could start with my work. I guess my, my works came from dreams. And I just talk about where I'm from, like what I've gone, like what I've seen from my experience. And a little bit as a background, um, I was born in, Me in Guanajuato in Mexico. And a lot of the where my work comes from is just like uh, Mesoamerican lore and uh, like a pre-Columbian notion of time. So I always have those elements in my work. And the poems I'm gonna read, they're from a manuscript that I wrote uh, 44, four or five years ago, and it's titled Desert Sands. So uh, my poems are really like concrete concrete poetry, like language poetry. So I'm going to read like four or five, and I could say that much. So I'll start. Words, lacerate, silence, Nahuatl, Nahuatlaca, plural form of Nahuatl, Speaking people, nombre que se dio a las naciones cultas que hablan la lengua mexicana. Lightning in the braids, this poetic stream. All I got is the ink to bleed, like crows, refract, black, pearls glare, 
sheen, and or ruby-throated hummingbirds, razor-sharp flight, iridescent, ghost hunt the plains, itonali, once shadows, spirit, soul, spirit helpers are the essence one breathes, it's Catlipoca, mirror, smoky, as writing this, blue lightning, inside the Temescali, Inipi, Suelar Ceremony, Nestle, Ashes, Cinders, Ceniza, in the Memories Blair, Voices, Coalesce, Rainbows of Flowers, in How Thoughts Bright, As Sunrise Burns, Night Stare, Flowers Calpantecutli, El Señor de la Aurora, Venus, First Light of Dawn, Breaks Past, the Meridians, Shaman's Cross, Parallels, Ethereal, Square, Silex Shards Languages, We Do Not All See the Same, In Xochitl and Cuicatl, Floricanto, Flower and Song, Inscribed in the DNA, In the Poolside Eclipse, These Words, Here Written, Before the Cursors and Screens, Blurred, Peripheral Incisions, In the Visual Cortex, and three more words, bring back ghosts, here hidden in, that's the first poem. And I have another one. This was titled, Lightning in the Blood. One, look into the symmetry of eye, spider's webs got you, dreams flow, cutting edge moon, fair constellation, flowers calpantecutli, el señor de la aurora, the trace, serrate, across nebula, supernova, to the equilibrium in the DNA, and the 405 elements and spirits outside space-time continuum, like sunshine, inside voices shard from sunstone calendars, ebb and glow in the mind stream, words cut. I bleed this, slowly moments seep away, and the hourglass turn to stone, pyramid shifts, accelerate, and the memories glare. Ukshmal, seven temples lost in space, step forward, a symbol engraved by shield jaguar in Jakshilan. Two eyes, sheer words from another time, lapse, photographic in Balam Khan. There are 365 steps and a serpentine light on the staircase, in the solstice, it's a court metamorphoses into Tetzcatlipoca site or thoughts struck from the jade, immaterial, ether, built on perception, multisensory, it's Chignawik Wawitl, Itil, Yapukjeyakatl, or Nine Rain, gathering three reed in the tonal poali, carry it within these words, fractured, visual resonance, invisible, I or thoughts last rate time, crossover meridians of light, like peach blossom spring in winter snows, the 20 called Temoxi, hologram, here inscribed, that is, suns crash into rainbows, like these, I thought experiments breathed into word, prayers, so the poetic keeps bleeding, in ceremony, the silex soul, shard into cloud cover in the jade iris glare, languages weaved in stelae of memories repose, the hawks in Kiche Maya is the glyph of flint knife, sharpened, obsidian eyes, fires as embers splint into light, how easily these monarch butterflies Meteor showers give, beam, refract, and shaded ideas without time, lapse, ideographic screens in concrete language, in the multidimensionality of worlds, lives, and these instances as stars implode. Gamma rays are lighting these X rays scarred from ancestral DNA, I. And I'll read my last poem. Um, as a little background, like all my poems are concrete poems, so they like have shapes in them. 
it's, it's always best like when you can see them. And let me read the last one. Transparent thoughts in the poolside eclipse. That's hard, you see, when there's a language but no one to speak it to. Nahuatlaca, Urepecha, Uchari Uripiqua, por nuestra fuerza, carry over sight, how languages bleed, and yellow, spider, suspended animation, adamantine steel, is the child in me to breathe these images into three dimensions, iris flare, 17 cycle guards, Chico Mercatl, Titil Nahuitecpat, it's the period of repose, betwixt visual cortex, Ishquimili, the dark card scribe, hollowed cenotes, carving, Tezcatlipoca, reading the periphery, 1519, La Noche Triste, pyramid glyphs bleed within, the scene in the race, camera obscura, you can read behind these words, aisles, desert sands, inscribed in the DNA, marred ethics, sharp jagged flint, tears encoded, in a topography scarred with an unbalanced cross, double helix, three stripes on the right temple, teardrops of the jaguar, how silence weighs, Hayoka thunder dreamers breathed into the bloodstream, eagle feathers breathed the melanin, darkens, blue, lightning, unipi swellage ceremony, spirits awaken, the memory, eye, jade, glass, slowly time and gold stream of consciousness, two rates in above count, reads, seven read, period, seclusion, four silex, tarasco, se está lloviendo la memoria, and so it's like breathing in multiple dimensions, suns refract, rainbows, kaleidoscope cast, stars, lobo shokoyotsi, the transparencies, the minds, eye, windstorms, lexicon of brown, White lightning, how words immaterial lacerations in time. Step back, and you will see a pyramid shift in the space, time, continual, accelerate. When you palm your hands, organic poets cut deep in the spirit essence. Desplazamiento lateral es lo que ves. Owls refract, jade, screens, in pitch dark forest, white, ochre, shades of ceremonies embedded in winter's frost, petroglyph origins of the carbon 14 frames, dreams, serrated, chromography, and wind fissures, I, it's a soliloquy that you're reading. Stone words cut, underworld corridors, in Tonina, beside you, see, invisible, jaguar warrior, open scrolls. Chiquel Celo Titit Nawitekpa. And that's the last poem. I think that was the end of it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, one of the wonderful things actually about um, this format with Zoom is that like people immediately, like especially Rob, who's fast, take words from you and like share it. And so, I was busy writing it down by hand and uh, you know, we were both caught on the meridians of light like peach blossom in spring in the winter snow. Beautiful. So, all right. Well, uh, it's now open up for if anyone would like to, I'm going to put it in the gallery view. If anyone, um, you know, now wishes that they had it would, read one more poem, any of our writers tonight or any of our audience members, I welcome you to be part of Open Mic. So just give me a wave or a chit chat. Um, you never know, it kind of goes from month to month, but it's wonderful to have so many uh, new names and faces here tonight. I hope that if this is your first time visiting the It's About Time Writers reading series because of, you know, coming in through um, the Jack Straw Writers, I hope that if you're a writer yourself, you will feel free to contact me, which I'm at Peggy Sturdivant at gmail.com. Um, I'm continually looking to 
um, set up readings every second Thursday of the month for new and experienced writers. And it's always been one of the most uh, welcoming uh, venues, no matter where we're located, for people, no matter where they are in the spectrum in terms of where they've ever read before or where they're experienced readers. And it'd just be delightful to have you spread the word and have you come back. So uh, if we don't have any, um, any other people who would like to do the open mic, I kind of feel like, do, do people remember when you used to be able to go to movies with double features and you could sit through and you could watch the beginning again? Have I totally dated myself? Yes. Um, and in that case, I think what we'll kind of do, since I didn't turn on the record uh, properly in the beginning, for those of you who came in late, we will now loop back and if I may call on you, oh, sorry, Michael, I'd love to have you read. So um, after Michael reads, in it, unless anybody else wants to read, I may reintroduce Rob and have him start his reading again. So it's wonderful. If you came in late, you won't have missed the beginning. So we could do the whole, it's early enough. We used to get kicked out of the library at 745. We could do the whole reading again. <laughs> Okay, um, Michael. Hi, um, and thanks, Rob, for for nudging me here. I uh, I was just going to be a happy audience member. I was just basking in all of the amazing poems that you all shared, but I can't turn down Rob. So uh, this is a poem of mine called "When the River at Last Has Fled Its Bed." We parse the difference between jealousy and envy and carry curved sticks pointing nowhere. Unlike water, we wander beyond banks. The damaged world seeps, corrodes battery terminals, collects cans far below in benthic canyons. And as meanings go, was never meant for this. Salvation through guilt. If it can burn, it has been burning. This is the nature of fuel, which is only ever one thing until it breaks into heat, into light. Thank you. Thank you so much. So in the meantime, Rob, have you, you know, have you nudged anyone else? You're just gonna work your way through? I was <laughs> trying to nudge people. Um. <laughs> I'll go. I'll read something. <laughs> so I've been signed up for a class with Sierra Nelson at Hugo House, and it's been super wonderful. We're reading uh, Madness, Rack, and Honey by Mary Rufel, and there's a section on sentimentality, and our assignment, one of them was, don't be less of a flower, be more of a flower, but also a stone. <laughs> and I thought, okay, what's sentimental? A phone call, right? So this poem is called Voice of the Beloved. A woman was jailed in the Netherlands for calling a man 65,000 times in a year, an average of 180 times a day, which is seven times an hour. They found eight cell phones in her home with only his number therein. They let her out on bail, but as soon as she was free, she started calling him again. What happened in her head? What important thing did she need to say? Was she trying, trying to drive him insane, as insane as he had driven her? Or did she merely need the sound of his voice to touch the tiny bones of her ears, the cadence and timber of his hello? More now? Just the one? <laughs> Oh yeah, just the one for now. I, you all sounded so great. It was. I'm really happy I got to tune in. I sign up to tune into these things and then I forget. <laughs> so I'm glad I was here tonight. It's, it's lovely to see you again. Come back anytime. Okay. Calling any other open mic readers? All right. Okay, in that case, um, we're going to, uh, what is it like, uh, as Chingy said, it's like a time loop. So depending on where you came in, 
It's also like those those movies that they show like when you're in museums and something, they just keep, you know, repeating. So for those of you who weren't here in the beginning, I'm very happy that for reading number 371, we've had some incredibly talented writers from this year's 2020 Jack Straw Writers Program, jackstraw.org. Um, our first reader is Rob Arnold, and he's now our fifth reader. <laughs> Rob Arnold's poems have appeared in Plowshares, Gettysburg Review, Poetry Northwest, Hyphen, Red Ink, Yes Poetry, and the Ocean State Review, among others. His work has been nominated for a Pushcart Prize and has received support from the Somerville Arts Council and Artist Trust. He's a program director and very busy curator of events at Hugo House. Uh, Rob. Thank you so much. Um, this is, uh, yeah, oh my gosh, I feel like we're definitely in a time loop. <laughs> um, okay, so this is, I'm going to um, read a long poem. Um, I'm not sure how much of it I should read, but, but, but Peggy, you're muted. <laughs> You know, I, I'm not sure how good I'm at cutting and editing. I think that um, definitely you should read through at least the first two. And then, you know, we could like, we could have like audience vote, you know, if anybody like missed it. And for all of you who were here before and now need to get dinner, we totally understand. Rob will not take it personally if you don't go through his reading again. <laughs> and so, Thank you. Mark your calendars for, I'm peering over, it will be after the election. We next uh, will be gathering on November 12th with Donna Mascolta, Claudia Castroluna, and Maria Cantalina Cantu, which should be a wonderful evening. So feel free to come back in the meantime, back to my introduction of Rob with the channel. Yeah, so I'm going to read, um a long poem, which sort of feels apropos um, for this moment with the pandemic. Um, it's a meditation on love and loss and distance, um, which seems weirdly and sadly appropriate for our times. Um, so these are uh, a nine part love poem called The Channel. One, we had come again to the long shore to look outward as if into the depths of memory, where lone house lights burned with secrecies, where the black tide writhed and the moon's negation filtered down. How long could we return here, hoping our solace would come back to us? The naked waves, distant aura reflecting in the moisture on our bodies. One by one, our beacons had gone out until the beach lay dark. It was like this every time, the two of us coming together, cupped in the illusions that played over the water's skin, like moonlight, or like something unnameable that passed between us swiftly before we could control ourselves and was gone. Two, our waking bodies unbecome us, wraith-like, too frail for the permanence around them. This chair, this pale morning light, resolving as the eyes adjust. These lives mistaken for dream, these dreams that seem a life's negation, punctuating our existence. So images from life appear as dreams through a window. Teenage lovers on the pier, a freighter yawing imperceptibly in the bay. The paths that we might walk, these tracings through the condensation that cloud our emergence into the real. Part chrysalis, part paralysis, beautifully cold, like cruelty made pure. The shape of the world is a ship pulling from harbor, huge, disquieting, carving its hulk 
through the fluid's passageway. Tiny lights of the barrios beyond the airport, man-made islands, the new volcanism that forges neighborhood from industrial scrap. So a heaviness pulls at the pier's knuckles as the ship steers into the open bay. It's like that, how our distance particulates each evening into traces we might leave behind. The you and I infused in this place. Times when we walked down this dock pursued by vacancy, or when vacancy walked in our step while the world closed seamlessly around us. This is us revealed, some smallness without center, oralless and bare, two non-things drifting in the tide's detritus. I should read, I'll read one more just in case. I don't know where they cut off. Okay, it's four. Voluminous, suddenly violent. The water surged against the retainer wall last night, shifting from some huge weight displaced offshore or just out of sight in the depths of the channel. I think of you these wild nights, landscape quaking with uncertainty. Where have you gone from us, I want to ask, as always and always as something in the water strains and goes white, strains and goes dark, as though an answer. Um, how many did we, did, we, did we lose? Not oh, that many. Oh my gosh. Hey, wow. Everybody was voting for you to keep going. I want to hear you say the, our dreck. I want you to get like you know. The dreck and the tritus. Yeah. I, I don't know. There might have been a lot of dreck. Um, so I have, uh, So as a little treat for those who stayed a little bit longer, do you mind if do you want, to, want me to read one sort of um, very new poem, totally unworkshopped and, and brand new? Um, and this is a fun poem because it's, um, yeah, new shit. <laughs> this is a fun poem because it's, um, uh, I was talking to a friend and saying how I edit moons out of poems. Um, and um, because it's like a danger in lyric poetry. And then I decided instead to just write an entire moon full poem. So this is, this is a moon full poem. Um, it's called All the Moons I've Cut from Poems. All the moons I've cut from poems I place them here for you. The moon, which is a rock peeled from another in the miasma of creation. The indifferent moon lofting above as flames clung to the monk's body. As men in a fury of belief beheaded the journalist. The moon, which is also that head, those dead sunken eyes staring down all night. The maybe moon, which is not a moon, but a street lamp. The street lamp, which is not a lamp, but the moon lighting a concrete expanse. A pixelated moon, shrunken moon that lovers might gift one another, which is also the moon of this rat cratered on the sidewalk. The moon of garbage strewn in the Chinatown shrubbery of the men nodding out on their stoops and trolley stops of the pockmarked boy inserting so tenderly the needle into his girlfriend's neck, which is to say the moon of my neighborhood, the red-lined moon, the gentrified moon, the moon that watched over genocides, mass murders, or this very moon tonight, which like a twin sister stillborn haunts the sky ex utero, as a spider might stride her web, this venomous moon, abdomen moon. And yes, this is also the lyric moon, the moon made of charred remains of every poet whose body is compressed into shards of light, into memories, into mouths we long for lonesome nights when the earth enshrouds the moon, when we stand at the water's edge to feel its hidden bulk tugging at the break wall. Our bodies pulled to the sea as the sea is pulled to the moon and the moon to the earth 
and so on through the great cosmic helter-skelter we skid through in perfect lives lit by imperfect light, refracting through the emptiness as vast as the void of death. And just now, the moon you send me, moon-faced young singer on the grainy black and white video, his smooth swagger, lip-synced lyrics, his impassioned arpeggiated woes, that longing beyond words, beyond honest you do, honest you do. Seven years later, he'd be murdered by the night manager of a Los Angeles motel. The baby bump half moon waxing his own words back as moon shaped the blood pooled. It's been too hard living, but I'm afraid to die because I don't know what's up there beyond the sky. Beyond the sky is more sky, leaking steadily into the vacuum of space. Beyond the sky is the infinite night, infinities of stars and their moons, each of them silent, each of them waiting for this blip of existence to unravel, or maybe each inhabited by souls of the dead and gone, the travesties and the forgotten, their great loves for one another, which had felt so real, so blessed, so validated, by this ancient skeletal light of the moon. So there's a fun moon poem, I mean, a dark moon poem <laughs> for everybody. Wow, that was quite a bonus we got. I'm, I'm so glad we decided to do this like run through again. So um, I'll forego the full bios, but Chingy, would you like to read as well next? Um, or, you know, or at least a poem. You mean like what I read before or? Whatever you want to read. <laughs> <laughs> or it was kind of like the idea is like there was a couple people who came in late and says, yeah, you guys should all do the whole thing again. <laughs> okay, I'll look for another poem, yeah. something that I didn't already read. Okay. Um, but I don't know what that is right now. So if if the others want to read and maybe you can come back to me. Okay, Maisha, how about you? Um, from the audience in my uh, in the other room, I heard pa wong pa wong. Um, to keep with spooky moon themes and monster moon themes and continual monster themes of <laughs> our decided um, readings. Um, a poem for Missy Elliott. Take my thong off and my tail go boom. To feel more connected in bed. Notice the sound of a steady heart. Remember like it's the last. He wants to initiate sometimes which means he wants you to take charge, flash a smile, bare your teeth, take time to breathe in his cologne, flare your nostrils, follow the scent, wear lingerie, let your feathers unfurl down your spine and flutter black, use a gentle touch, flash painted talons, whisper, break the hinges on your jaw and roar, breathe in cologne, Flare your nostrils. Don't close your eyes. Wait for the moment when the whites of his look like yours. Since he called you wild anyways, bury your prey in the same place you put all your bones. Be a beast, like the animal you are. Thank you. I'm enjoying this, uh, this kind of more freewheeling approach to tonight. So it's kind of inspired. Chingy, did you find some another poem? Uh, okay, this is random. I just opened up a random word doc. So, so this is your random bonus. I don't think I've ever read this loud. I think it's very new. House. The story. Oh wait, actually, you know what's so weird. This is about the same house. I just opened it up and <laughs> anyway, I've never read this before. And um, it's, it's called House. 
The story began with a barrage of strangers, their words shoved into the door. The story begins with a half abandoned house with a paint job, the German caretaker casually remarked done by local crackheads. It began with a housing crisis, a city raising down its affordable housing, a corporate hiring boom, the boom and bust of oil money. It began with little sparks of community history, a house passed down from artist to artist, each an imprint in the house. A house full of holes, never able to keep out the lizard, the cockroach, the ant, and the rat. A house with a ghost sibling whose relatives showed up to watch, to mourn, to gather. It began with a letter taped to the door by the sheriff. It began with 48 hours. 48 hours and counting. How many letters could we tape on boxes? Question mark. How many strangers in the city with no family could we ask? Question mark. How many rooms could be emptied in how many minutes? Question mark. A house full of sparks gathering in the doorway. A house of friendly strangers wrapping up one life to ship to another. How could it end? Question mark. A dream of small dwelling opening up to tree and bloom, opening up to many hands to make the meal. That's it. Small bonus. <laughs> More than a small bonus. I love your use of question mark. I've never heard anybody do that quite before. Okay, how about you, Jose? Would you like to do a bonus? He's been invisible to us anyway, so I, I don't know if he's able to like hear or see. So unless I hear from him, maybe I should cut my cut my losses. Um, maybe oh, Jose's omnipresent, you know, just yeah, forever yeah. and always with us. Yes, you're right. You're right. So anyway, we actually had kind of a great uh, showing. We This is like better than when um, people used to come in the library and like when they'd leave, they'd always think that it would be better not to like um, shut the door. And so then we'd somebody would have to get up and shut the door. So we've held on to much more of an audience. And that is a those who stayed. What a bonus it's been tonight. So I would like to thank everyone who was here tonight. And like I said, come back, uh, visit other times, and let me know, you know, invite your friends, tell us about It's About Time. It's always the second Thursday, and we're always welcome. We like to lure people in, you know, sometimes we get them on the three minute open mic, and next thing you know, we've got them as a featured reader, so. Thank you so much. Good night, everyone. And I'll be in touch when the recording is available. Thank you so much, Coco Decker, for act, uh, offering to help. <laughs> Beautiful reading. Totally agree. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, Peggy, for hosting us. My Thanks pleasure. for having us. Good Thanks, night. everybody. Bye. Great Bye, to friends. See you all.